Hey guys, what's going on? Wayne here, editor-in-chief right here at 4constructionpros.com. So over the last few years, you know, electrification in the construction industry has really taken off, right? The work on electrifying construction equipment models has really caught on fire. That's probably a poor choice of words. It's all the buzz. You get the point. But here's the thing about electrification with the vehicles in the construction industry. You know, unlike automotive, where just about every major brand in the world has come out and made some kind of announcement or prototype unveiling to kind of detail what exactly they are doing in the realm of electrification. On the construction side, you know, some manufacturers of equipment are more talkative about the work they're doing behind the scenes than others. And of those, Komatsu has been one of the most talkative. And a big reason for that is that Komatsu sees electrification and this kind of coming era of electric machines as, you know, not only an area where it has a big head start in. After all, they were the first equipment manufacturer to introduce a hybrid excavator all the way back in 2008 with the PC200-8. But they also see this as an opportunity for new market dominance. In fact, Komatsu is getting ready to launch its very first fully electric battery powered excavator. Not only that, this excavator is going to be powered by swappable battery packs that are made by none other than Honda. And here it is, the PC. C01E. Now, if you're underwhelmed at this thing, I totally understand. Even though this is the smallest hydraulic excavator that you can actually ride on, which is pretty cool. But before you disappointedly walk away from your screen or close this browser tab or whatever, let me explain to you why this thing is such an important development, not just to electric machines, but to the entire heavy equipment market as a whole. All right, first up, let's talk specifics. What is this tiny excavator? and who is using it. The PCO one is actually one of three micro excavator models that Komatsu sells in overseas markets. And as the name suggests, this little electric digger is based on a diesel powered model called the PCO one. That's a 3.5 horsepower machine with a digging depth of, get this, a very cute 3.5 feet, weighing in at a whopping 661 pounds. Now, a few more fun facts to drive home just how small this thing is. The fuel tank is 1.2 gallons. The hydraulic flow is 2.7 gallons per minute, and it creates a ground pressure of only 2.4 PSI. Now, the diesel-powered PCO1 is sold in the Asia and Oceania. I looked at the pronunciation. It's not Oceania. 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 Asia Oceania. 20 minutes later. Oceania. The PCO1 is sold in the Asia and Oceania markets, particularly because of its small size. It can fit in the back of most pickup trucks. And like we said earlier with that 2.4 PSI rating, it has very, very low ground disturbance. Now with those specs in mind, where is this thing typically used? Well, Komatsu says it's used in pipeline, agriculture, livestock, gardening, landscaping, applications like that. Now, like I said, there are three micro excavator models in total, and those include the PC-05 and at the top of the line at the PC-09. Now, just kind of for comparison's sake, that PC-09 is a 9.1 horsepower machine. The dig depth goes from that PC-01's, you know, three and a half feet all the way up to four feet, 10 inches. And this machine weighs a full ton, so it's quite a bit bigger. And we have to go over the specifications and what we know about the PC-01 diesel model, because right now, Komatsu has not released any specs whatsoever on the electrified version, so we don't really know how it'll stack up. However, if we're thinking about precedent and we think about other manufacturers who've put out electric machines alongside diesel counterparts, we'll think about Volvo, for example. Typically, the goal here is not necessarily to exceed the diesel power, diesel capability, but you do want to put a battery uh, in this machine and have it at least be able to match that capability and that power. And from what we've seen, it would be a shock if this electrified PC-01 did not, you know, at least match what the diesel PC-01 can do. Another important note is that while the machine is powered by a battery and it is an electric machine, it retains its hydraulics. So the boom, arm, bucket, and the blade, all of those are still driven by hydraulics. So while this machine is gonna share a lot in common with its diesel counterpart, if you do look at them side by side, you look at the PC-01 and the PC-01E, the thing that jumps out to you is that giant hump on the butt of this machine. And it really kind of looks like Komatsu simply just tacked on uh, that this, this Honda battery system on the back. And you can kind of see that's obviously gonna have an impact on its weight and clearly its footprint. All right, now speaking of those batteries, let's dig into what makes these Honda batteries so special. To do that, we're gonna have to go all the way back to 2018, all the way back to the before time and the Consumer Electronics Show 
where Honda first unveiled these mobile power pack batteries, MPP for short. Now it's kind of hard to find this information in Honda press releases and the Komatsu Honda joint press releases don't really say, but according to info released at the time in 2018 when these MPP battery packs were uh, first unveiled to the public, each battery pack holds about one kilowatt hour of charge. All right, but what does one kilowatt hour worth of capacity really mean? So for comparison's sake, let's take a look at the other battery development project that Komatsu currently has going on right now. On this project, Komatsu is partnering with a California-based company called Proterra. And Proterra is a well-established player when it comes to commercial battery technology. And up until this announced partnership with Komatsu, really the bulk of the company's work has really been on electrifying commercial buses and trucks. For instance, in 2017, one of Proterra's 600 kilowatt hour batteries enabled a bus to travel 1,102 miles on a single charge. And for that Komatsu partnership, it's probably safe to assume that whatever battery that Proterra and Komatsu are working to kind of build for a midsize excavator that has the capacity to power a midsize machine of that size, think about a 14 ton machine for a full eight hour workday, it's probably pretty safe to assume that they're trying to adapt similar battery technology that's going into these buses and trucks to put it inside of an excavator. Now, if we wanna take this battery capacity comparison even further into the automotive world, Tesla's latest Model S has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. And when GMC announced its massive Hummer EV, this new truck and SUV uh, that's gonna be fully electric, the battery pack inside of those is supposed to be 200 kilowatt hours. All right, so with numbers like 600, 100, and 200 kilowatt hours, Honda's little MPP battery pack at one kilowatt hour of capacity starts to sound kind of like a joke. But here's the thing, when it comes to battery packs and really thinking of EVs in general, we kind of have to avoid the temptation of looking and getting distracted at big numbers and big specs. And that's because as the hour in the term suggests, kilowatt hour is a measurement of capacity and not power or capability. So to put that in kind of like simple terms, the best way to kind of think about it is that one kilowatt hour is enough capacity to power a 1000 watt appliance uh, for basically one hour. If you plug something into a one kilowatt hour power source and it's at 1000 uh, watts, you know that you're gonna get an hour of use out of that. If you go lower, let's go half, you might get two hours out of it. But if you go above that 1000 hour mark, that's when your hour capacity starts to get less and less and less. But still in the grand scheme of things, one kilowatt hour, Obviously, it's not a lot. But that's exactly why back in 2018, when Honda first introduced these battery packs, that they were introduced as, you know, a power source for small vehicles and smaller things. Things like, you know, robots or mobility scooters or even UTVs. In fact, right now, most of the world is excited about these battery packs because Honda is going to start developing them to put them in their motorcycles. What's funny in the context of this discussion around what one kilowatt hour is and is that a lot and how long will it power even this tiny little machine if you look closely at the PC-01E's kind of design, that battery pack on the butt that we mentioned earlier, there's two slots for batteries. So that, that seems to suggest anyway that one kilowatt hour battery by itself was not enough, that this excavator, you know, even as small and diminutive as it is, still requires two. But again, this whole conversation kind of boils down to capacity and not capability. We know that these battery packs are powerful enough to power this tiny little excavator. What we don't know is how long they'll power it for. And when you look at all of these electric machine prototypes and other announcements that OEMs have made, generally that's kind of where you find yourself. You don't really have a rock solid understanding of just how long these electric machines are gonna last in the field before they need a charge. Unfortunately, that question, how long does it last between charges, is really the primary concern of end users, of contractors, of operators out there when it comes to electric machines. Largely, it hasn't been. I don't think this is gonna be as powerful. Really, the power question has in large part kind of been answered by the sheer power of cars like the Tesla or this new GMC Hummer. Everyone knows that they put a lot of torque and a lot of power to the ground. The question for now, is what is the range? How long can I put this thing to use before I'm gonna have to stop and plug it in? But that's exactly why these Honda MPP battery packs are so important. All this talk of capacity really brings us to the big push in terms of development and engineering that Honda is putting, and now Komatsu, are putting into these MPP battery packs. 
they're swappable. These battery packs are not designed for maximum capacity. They're designed to kind of replicate as much as you can that immediate availability of energy that we currently only enjoy in the form of fuel powered vehicles. When your diesel or gas powered equipment or tool runs out of gas or diesel, you fill it back up and you get back to work. Having to stop a machine or put it away whenever it runs out of power just so it can charge up, that's a major paradigm shift. And it's not something that really any OEMs want to start asking their customers to get used to. So essentially in this kind of scenario that Honda and Komatsu are laying out with this initial announcement, you'll have no fewer than four MPP battery packs two on the charger and two in the machine. When the two in the machine are depleted, you take those out, you swap them out with the two that were on the charger and you're ready to go. Now, how many swaps it takes to get you through a day is anyone's guess. Are you gonna need eight of these batteries? How long do the batteries take to charge? Those are all really good questions and unfortunately questions we don't have the answers for at this moment in time. And again, clearly, you know, one kilowatt hour battery packs are not going to be the full realization of this kind of vision of swappable power that Komatsu and Honda are envisioning. You know, the fact that these packs are one kilowatt hour per charge is precisely why Komatsu literally is implementing them on the, the very smallest machine that it makes. Now, what is clear, what we do know, and, and it's it's both important and encouraging to, to point this out, Komatsu clearly sees that there's, there's two paths to fully realizing and bringing electric machines to the market. Now, one path is with machines with batteries that don't go anywhere. They sit in the machine, you deplete them of their power, and then you have to charge them back up again. And the other path is with swappable battery packs. Now, the fact that Komatsu sees the value in both of those approaches and is partnering with two separate companies with their own kind of distinct strengths and advantages in those different approaches, that really shows that Komatsu is very much committed to electrification as a process. And the other thing to kind of keep in mind is that by the time everything is said and done, it's very unlikely that just one of those approaches, whether it be swappable battery packs or built-in batteries, that one of those is gonna fully win out over the other, right? There's a really good chance that in the future, you're gonna have machines that are powered by swappable battery packs, and you're also gonna have machines on the market that are powered by stationary batteries. Kind of going even further into that aspect of things, different applications locations, different project environments, you know, different jobs, different machines, all of those things are gonna like require different development and engineering solutions. And Komatsu is clearly aware of that. And they're going at this problem from both ends. But the other big thing is that they're gonna be working on ensuring that you're gonna be able to swap these MPP batteries between all of these different devices and vehicles. That means if you do someday kind of build up a collection of these MPP batteries, you could swap these batteries between your motorcycle and your excavator or, or your tools and your UTV, et cetera. All right, so when is this thing gonna hit the market? Well, Komatsu and Honda say that they are planning to launch the PCO1e with this MPP battery system by the end of March in 2022. Now, Komatsu hasn't said yet whether or not this PCO1e is going to come to North America itself. I don't know how many of you out there are really kind of uh, in need of a machine like this, uh, but just in case you are, it's probably not coming to North America just kind of based on where its diesel counterpart is already sold. But like we said at the top of this video, this machine in particular is not really really kind of what's important here. What's really important is Komatsu's partnership with Honda and the fact that these two giant companies are working on solving swappable battery packs for construction equipment. That's a huge development and it's something that could have major impacts to the entire equipment and construction industries further down the line. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up on this Komatsu Honda partnership. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you want to connect or ask me any questions or give me your thoughts on this topic, feel free to reach out here on Twitter. I'm at Wayne Grayson. And uh, we have other ways for you to connect with the 4 Construction Pros brand. Be sure to check out all of our social media channels and subscribe on YouTube as well if that is your preferred viewing environment. All right, guys, thanks. See you next time.